That is toxic. You're gonna eat that? I went to the doctor and he said it is more than likely that I have tapeworm. Update on the tapeworm situation with Nick. 7.30 this morning, Nick passed away at the Kaiser Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, every day we reach a new low. It seems like with every day that passes, we invent a new level of desperation that people are somehow willing to stoop to in order to get views on the internet. And today is no exception. Now we've seen a lot of sad things that people have done with the sole intent of blowing up on some social media platform. I mean, just the other day we watched as a guy robbed a couple of convenience stores in order to get a few thousand views on YouTube, so uh, this is nothing new. Yet for some reason, every single time we wind up in this situation when we're about to watch somebody do something insane for TikTok views, I'm still surprised. Because it's not every day that you find somebody on TikTok who is willing to eat parasites and what they believe to be the diseased meat of an animal just for some engagement. But that's exactly what you'll find on the TikTok account of Nick Kratka, a TikTok fisherman who has recently gone kind of viral for purposefully eating eating the tapeworms out of a fish. A couple of weeks ago, he uploaded a video where he caught a bass, found tapeworms in it, and then proceeded to eat it anyways, purposefully exposing the meat that he was eating to the tapeworms. And since uploading that video and having it go viral, it's not the last time he's done it. He's posted like five videos since this where he eats something that he probably shouldn't, and then chronicles how sick he gets. Now you might be thinking this guy does live in Florida, maybe he's just crazy, but if you look at his videos before the original one with the tapeworms, you'd find that he didn't really upload anything similar, but after that tapeworm video went viral, he's been pumping out similar videos since. Why? Well, because big numbers on internet videos make people do silly, goofy stuff, and we're about to see that in full effect. Let's begin. Now please subscribe. That is toxic. You're gonna eat that? Let's go fishing in the hurricane. I'm gonna be using a whopper flopper, which is a topwater lure. This guy is coming in at 13 inches and a quarter. He has some nice fillets on him. There's no minimum length required for a largemouth bass. So as long as you catch one, you can keep it and eat it. This guy is such a handsome fish. I feel bad eating him, but we're starving. All right, not really super relevant to the discussion of the tapeworms, but what are y'all's thoughts on eating bass? I know this is like a controversial topic in the fishing community. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I'm curious to hear y'all's verdict. Largemouth bass is a great first fish to fillet because they don't have round heads, so they're not going to be wobbling all over the place. Realizing that he has tapeworms, so it's gonna be pretty tough to eat. I looked it up and apparently if you cook the fish thoroughly, the tapeworm shouldn't affect you, but I can't say that I'm not experiencing problems after I ate This it. is the filet I got. So while it might gross some people out, what he's saying is entirely true. When you're catching wild fish and having some sort of worm or parasite inside of it is kind of the rule, not really the exception. It is extremely common. For people who have never been fishing, this might sound insane to you, like why would he not just throw this fish away? But that's just how it is with wild caught fish. Even the stuff you buy from the grocery store, if it was wild caught, you can almost guarantee that at some point there was some kind of worm in it. With farmed fish, it is far less common, but when it comes to wild caught fish, you gut it right, you fillet it right, you take out the worms you can see, then you freeze it how you're supposed to, or you cook it how you're supposed to, and you're fine. However, with all that being said, that is not what this guy is going to do. I seasoned it, threw it in the pan, and then presented it right next to the tapeworms, which was a mistake. Yeah, that is a bit of an understatement, so I feel like when you're learning how to cook, one of the first things that a person's going to teach you is you don't put your cook stuff where your raw stuff once went. This is the rule even if you don't have tapeworms in your fish. If you have a plate full of raw steak, chicken, fish, whatever, you don't cook that raw steak, chicken, fish, or whatever, and then put it back on the same plate, ever. When said plate of raw fish is now housing a fish carcass with tapeworms on it, you definitely do not want to put your cooked fish on that plate. And you certainly don't want to lean your cooked fish against the tapeworms. This was 100% done on purpose and this guy was hoping he would get tapeworms because he knew this TikTok would blow. Yo, low-key, like, the taste worms add some flavor. They're pretty good. This might be TMI. It's been two days, and I have not stopped going to the bathroom. I'm kind of afraid that I literally have tapeworms in my stomach. I've never gone to the bathroom this much in my life. I'm mildly concerned. If you know anything about this in the comments, please let me know, because I am I am kind of afraid that I have a parasite. No, you're not. You're not even able to hide your visible excitement. This is exactly what you were hoping for. I mean, you have a giant grin on your face as you tell the internet, hey, guys, uh, I think I have a tapeworm. You don't see too afraid. You actually seem quite pleased with this situation. I just don't get it. This guy already had a huge following. Why do you feel the need to do this? Update on the tapeworms that I ate the other day. I went to the doctor and he said it is more than likely that I have tapeworms. Or some kind of parasite inside me. I'm going to the bathroom non-stop. My stomach is killing me. He prescribed me three different medications that are anti-parasitic. We've all seen that video of the bear that has like a 50 foot tapeworm coming out of his butt and that literally could have been me if I didn't get to the doctor in time. The doctor didn't know what kind of worm it was so he just like gave me all the different 
different anti-parasitic things. Some of the worms cause seizure, muscle damage, and like you can lose your eyesight because the worms get in there. Uh-huh. Yep. And you willingly created a situation where you put yourself at risk of that for a TikTok. How does a person get to this point? Like I can understand the nasty food challenges where all you're risking is your comfort by eating something that doesn't taste very good. But when you get to the point that you are eating parasites in hopes of getting views, I feel like you might need your internet access revoked. You're a danger to yourself. If there is any lesson you learned from this, it would be do not eat worms inside of a bath. Specifically, Florida lakes and ponds can be dangerous to eat out of because it's such a warm environment for these worms and parasites to grow. I am an idiot. I'm not gonna lie. This was, this was totally my fault. I was like, oh, it'll be a good video. I'll eat some tapeworms. Who does that? Who, why would I do that? And before you guys come at me in the comments, I looked it up and apparently if you cook the fillets thoroughly, the tapeworms won't get in you or any worm won't get in you. So another lesson is don't believe things you read on the internet either. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you did all this and you're still unaware of where you went wrong. No, my friend, this is not a case of Google lying to you. What you read was true, but when you rest your cooked filet against a carcass infested with tapeworms and then leave it there for who knows how long while you get these shots and pictures for your video, that is when some cross-contamination can occur and it doesn't really matter how long you cooked it because you're resting it against live tapeworms. You've got to know that's what got you in this situation, right? So as of recording this, these two videos got 13 million views collectively while the other videos this guy uploads averages like 50 to 300,000. So, as I'm sure you might have expected, this is not where it ends. A few days later, he uploaded this TikTok where he fakes his own death. He has his friend come on and say that he died that morning due to the parasites spreading to his eyes and brain, and uh, it doesn't end there. He goes on to talk about a fake service they're holding him where his funeral is going to be, how his family and friends are distraught, really just milking this situation as much as possible, and dragging out this very poor taste a joke into something that becomes very gross. I mean, trying to trick your audience into thinking that you died is probably one of the worst things you can do as a content creator. I mean, I'm not sure how anybody ever thinks that's a good idea, but it goes on and on and eventually towards the end, he's like, haha, just kidding. I'm not actually dead. You just got pranked. But I guess the 20 million or so views that Nick got from these three videos is not quite enough because after realizing he can farm views like this, he did not stop. Shortly after the awesome fake death prank, he released a TikTok where he caught a trout that he believed to have tapeworms and ate it anyways. I mean, I just don't really understand the thought process here. Is this guy just going to continue to eat increasingly more dangerous food? Because yeah, it worked for a few videos, but eventually the shock factor is going to wear off. After you make 10 videos of you eating a fish with tapeworms, people are not going to care anymore and you're going to have to up the stakes. I mean, personally to me, that doesn't really sound like the smartest business plan, but maybe Nick disagrees because that's kind of what he's done. In two of his more recent videos, he's catching and eating iguanas and doing the same sort of shtick. In the first video, he acknowledges all the dangers of eating iguana. And in the second video, guess what? Now he has salmonella. I don't know if he's just faking all of this stuff or if he's really getting sick, but either way, it is not sustainable. Update on the iguana that I ate the other day. I've been going to the bathroom nonstop since I ate that iguana. I was looking up the diseases that you can get from them and the list is long. Salmonella, metallic bone disease, CANV, mouth rot, respiratory infection, intestinal parasites, hypervitaminosis D, avascular necrosis and the list goes on. Every time I have something to eat, my stomach kills me. I've been going to the bathroom like multiple times a day. Based on the symptoms that I have, I either have salmonella or a parasite in me. For salmonella, you'll have diarrhea, fever, chills, and abdomen pain. I pretty much have all of that except for a fever. For the parasite, I don't know. I, I, I'll be if I have another parasite in me. I really don't want to go to the doctor. I have a trip that I'm planning in the next like three days. So I think the tapeworm video might actually be real. I feel like he definitely made it with the thought of going viral in mind, but I mean, he did rest that fish against tapeworms. So it wouldn't exactly surprise me if they found their way into him, but I feel like this guy is chasing the high of those videos going viral and now he's just starting to fake stuff. I don't know about you guys. I'm not a medical expert, but this does not look like a guy who has salmonella. This looks like a guy who's having a great day. Through all of these videos, he's been and beaming and smiling while talking about all of these horrible symptoms he has. It just doesn't really make sense. And I'm sure a guy who is willing to fake his own death on social media is willing to fake a few videos as well. Well guys, what are your thoughts? Is a tapeworm dinner worth a few million views on TikTok? For me, personally, I'm gonna say no. I feel like at some point these social media platforms need to crack down on what they allow their creators to do in order to get views. I mean, I don't really expect that to ever happen because more viral videos means more money for 
the platform, but it would be a nice thing to see. Because we're getting to a point where stuff that was extreme and would have definitely gone viral like five years ago is nothing. I mean, think about the stuff that used to go viral. The guy who comes to mind first is the LA Beast, where he would like drink old Pepsi or spoiled milk and then throw up. Stuff like that is mild now. If you're not willing to eat parasites, your head's not really in the game. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Subscribe.